The uh, video for today is going to be on tonality, vocal tonality, and projection and such. Uh, I was dealing with a guy just now today during coaching, and, and I'm always dealing with this. My brother, these young guys or these older guys, typically it's my young guys that really have no experience, and they just, they're trying to kind of like come across like a skater guy or a surfer, and they have this very flat voice. And some of them, uh, it even has like, it even sounds masculine, it even sounds attractive, or even appealing. But the issue is that, you know, they're always talking like this. They always sound the same way. And then I've got my older guys I work with and it's like, they, they're they so stuck in their ways that their voice is just very like, like it just stays the same the whole time, okay? And that's getting to a point where women will start to perceive these guys as being like brittle or rigid and old, okay? Anyway, you hear me talk, you watch myself in my videos, you know, Julian from RSD, Jeffy, um, Sasha Day Game. We talk like this. We're like, yo, we're all over the place, okay? This isn't, you guys gotta understand, okay? I'm ex military. I couldn't do this when I was in the military. I didn't sound like this, all right? Um, you can watch my 2008 talk. I come off very almost subdued. Uh, even that was pushing the limits of what it was to be an actual military and to have military bearing in your in your speech. My point is this, the we, the reason the way we're coming across is from talking to girls for so long, for years and years, okay? So I need you guys to understand that vocal tonality and vocal range is a massive part of game. You guys have to develop it. You can take 10 years to fucking do it if you want, or you can be like, okay, I have to pursue that skill set and make it happen, okay? Um, in my particular training program, I've got an entire repertoire of vocal drills, technical vocal training that I put guys through. It's from my DJ buddy, it's from military stuff I was doing, um, and uh, some stuff that, you know, is even kind of part of like the general consistency as far as how vocal training should go. Roger Love put out Vocal Power, great program. But I've worked with guys that took, that, that went through the whole Roger Love Vocal Power program before, and they're still terrible afterwards. And it's because they don't know how to apply themselves and actually do it correctly, okay? Um, so if, if, that's the, if that's the choice you have, great. Work with somebody that can critique you and kind of guide you in the right direction, okay? Anyway, getting back to the original discussion here, um, this is a huge problem. Having a flat, I, I liken guys' voices to a sine wave, okay? Most guys' sine waves or cosine waves on a graph is up and down like this, and there's no real range to it. Whereas if you look at a girl's voice on that same graph, it goes, it's just all over the place, okay? The repercussions of this, the significance of this is fucking profound, okay? If you watch American television or sitcoms or advertisements, okay? Or if you look at the state of affairs as far as like divorce versus people staying in marriages and, and where they really kind of break down how that's going, um, women just massively overwhelm men vocally. When they get into an argument with a guy, uh, when they're at a club, they're just, they're all over the place and it's overwhelming guys. So you've got this, you know, this wife that harangues her husband constantly and he's just trying to get out of it. He's just trying to like, please don't, please stop nagging at me. That's not the solution. The solution is to not back down and try to appease a woman. The solution is to be able to contain her within your vocal range. If she goes crazy, you go crazy too. But as a man, you're able to, to go in that direction, take to that extreme, and maintain a lot of emotional inner well-being and calm and steadfastness, which is great. In the end, it seems that a lot of guys are sort of afraid of the skill set that women bring to the table when it comes to emotional communication. But in actuality, this is a lost skill set that guys... Uh, are supposed to have and did have. There have been eras in time where a man that could speak and had great vocal range sort of ran things, okay? Like the Victorian era, uh, the Renaissance era, you know, think Casanova, think politicians, Winston Churchill, think Hitler even, okay? The way they did, the, the things they did is they influenced verbally, vocally, uh, and, and made an emotional... Uh, the tidal wave. They were a force of nature because of the way they spoke to people. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that when you're becoming better with women or, or honing your skill set, you've got to develop vocal range 
tonality and projection. Okay, you have to. It is necessity. All guys that are good with girls have this. The only person I know of uh, that is good, is an adept, is an elite, would be Todd from RSD. Uh, and for the longest time, I always felt like Todd was just being stubborn about it. He didn't want to sort of turn into a, an extroverted guy or, or develop those qualities. He was kind of like stubbornly refusing. But I can watch him now and kind of see where he's building that area. Um, let me give you some examples of how this works. Okay. So uh, I was talking to a girl in Cosmopolitan Lobby here in Vegas a couple months back. I, I walk up next to her and I start talking to her. And it's immediately apparent that she's like, oh, this is cool. And so I put my arm around here and we're talking. Her Amazon friend walks up. This chick in her heels is well over six feet tall. Big bitch, okay? And she comes up with full assertiveness and entitlement and authority, grabs my girl, starts talking like she's the boss and tries to pull her off, okay? This is where a guy, these, these guys running around, just like their little subdued mealy mouth talking. They're like, hey, wh what are you doing? She just blows them the fuck off. Get the fuck out of here, chill. You're, you're not getting my girl, okay? Me, I had a different reaction. I'm like, whoa, mother hen, two minutes, please, okay? It had the effect of like backhanding her across the face, okay? I wasn't trying to hurt her but I was asserting the boundaries of this situation. Hey, me and this girl are talking, you're fucking interfering, back the fuck out, okay? Uh, there was a look of pain that crossed her face, okay? And she fucked off. And then another mother hen came in. I'm like, oh, another mother hen, okay. And she got scared and she ran off. And funny enough, guys hit me up for like AMOG advice, like how to handle other guys. In my experience, the real issues are with other women. Okay, there was a chode orbiter in this set. We go back to their group and there's this guy that's interested in my chick. I ignored him. He wasn't, he wasn't a threat in the slightest. It was the women that were trying to like come in and, and do the little machinations. Uh, and this is how women treat each other and how they treat guys trying to come in and take their girls. Okay, and I'm like, no, fuck no. And in my voice, you can hear that authority. Okay, that expressiveness. And this, not only does it make me a force of nature, but prevention is the best cure. And that's what I'm doing here. By sounding like this, by being able to explode in exuberance, I'm not, it's, I'm not angry, I'm not mad, I'm not trying to be frightening or intimidating. I'm like, yo, what up? By being this way, I prevent people from seeing me as a victim, thinking that they can come in on my shit and try to wreck it. They don't even see me as, they just sort of see me as, okay, I'm going to leave that guy alone because I can't do anything about it anyway. All right. And that's the main lesson. Anyway, uh, I catch back up with that girl about 20 minutes later. I intercept her on the way to the bathroom. As I'm coming in, the original mother hen uh, is coming in as well. And she sees me from like seven to eight feet away and stops, just stops. Right. And, and she speaks to the girl from like that far away. And she's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just see you. I take this girl upstairs and I fuck her in her room at the fucking Cosmo. Okay, because my vocal range is such where uh, if I need to, I can terrorize somebody. And if I have to, I will. At the same time, though, it's not, it's, I, I'm not, you know, people kind of ascribe anger, being, being mad, being t intimidating. If that's the effect, fine. But I always maintain a, like a, an exuberant, happy vibe. I'm very, being very positive. Just because I had to stop something and say no to somebody doesn't mean I lose my vibe. Because I want to make that clear as well. Because a lot of guys, a lot of guys misinterpret this and they're like, "Oh, anger, anger is the solution." No, you need to learn how to express yourself in this way while maintaining positive, good vibes. Okay, uh, all of this is covered in my training program, but I wanted to give you guys uh, a nice block of instruction in this area and really set the tone and kind of guide you guys in the right direction. So hit me up if you have any questions, manhor manhor.org. And I will talk to you guys soon. Ba-bam. And I will talk to you guys soon. Ba-bam.